functions. As a programmer, that's a tool that we use quite often. But turns out there is a lot to be said about how a function can be optimized and how we can actually write functions in a way that perhaps makes things a little bit better. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic known as tail calls. This is an intermediate to advanced topic. So yeah, we'll be delving quite deep. Anyway, more on this on this random Wednesday episode. Hello and welcome back to another random Wednesday episode. Today is all about functions, not just about writing functions themselves, but what they actually look like and how they actually behave under the hood. So today's video will be split into several parts. First, we'll try to understand the actual relationship between what functions are and how they actually you know, behave and are stored in RAM. After we are done with that, we can talk about tail calls and tail call optimization, which shows where tail calls start to shine. We'll also talk a little bit about recursion because tail call recursion is a thing as well. So for all these topics, you can pop open the video description or go onto the timeline and jump ahead as you need to. So let's start from the basics, from the foundations of just programming in general and think about how programs relate to RAM. Here's the idea. When you write and compile a program, it gets turned into machine code. This machine code is loaded up somewhere in RAM when you run the program and all your computer is doing is it's fetching instruction by instruction as it moves through these instructions in RAM. Most of the time we go sequentially, right? So we execute one instruction, we go on to the next and the next and the next. But there are times in which we will jump around and that could happen if we do things like if statements or loops. However, those are not the only two situations in which this happens. Another example is if we do functions. You see, a function is essentially a block of code, right? It's a chunk of code that belongs together. It takes in some inputs, it produces some outputs. And the same applies in a compiled piece of code when everything is loaded into RAM. Your function is loaded elsewhere in RAM, and if you make a function call, your computer jumps off to another portion of RAM and starts executing the instructions there, as per normal. So this creates an interesting problem, right? Because after jumping away, you've got to know how to jump back, right? Well, that's not too difficult. All we need to do is to store the original position so that when we are off in our function, we can jump back when we're dead. But what if that function calls another function? Since there are two returns involved now, we need to remember two return addresses. And that second function could call another function. You get the idea, it stacks up. Well, in fact, the way in which we solve this problem is to use a stack. I'm not gonna explain too much about stacks, we've talked about that before, but a stack is a first in last out structure. In other words, the last thing you add to it is the first thing that comes back out. What this means is every time I proceed into a function, I first store the return address into a stack. The stack can grow as large as it needs to go, and anytime I need to return, I'll take the topmost value of the stack, and that allows me to go back to the caller. This is what we mean by a call stack. Of course, the return value isn't the only thing that's important to us here. With every function call, you have a set of local variables, right? This includes whatever is passed in as parameters from the outside world, as well as whatever variables the function itself actually needs to do its processing. So this is something that belongs on a call stack as well. So you can imagine that if we have a bunch of functions that call each other, the call stack grows very quickly. Now, none of this has anything to do with tail calls just yet, but what we've done is we've painted a big picture as to how everything behaves, right? What do functions do and the purpose of a call stack. Now, we can talk about tail calls. A tail call looks something like this. At the end of a function, we call another function. The key point of this being a tail call is the fact that this is the very last thing you do as part of a function call. Now, if we were to go back to the same old picture that we painted just now, what this would do is this would basically populate something into the call stack, right? We will jump off to do the other function, we'll return from the function, then we'll return from this particular function. But if you think about it, is that really necessary? You see, we are at the very end of the current function, right? We don't actually have to do anything else. When that function returns, really this guy isn't doing anything with the return value except just passing it back. So as you can see, a tail call opens itself up for optimization. 
We don't need to go through the whole process because we know that this is the last thing we're doing. And that is why we get to talk about this. We get to talk about tail call optimization. Now, do take note, you need a compiler that can recognize a tail call is happening and optimize for it. You can write tail calls as much as you like in a language that doesn't care, you're not gonna get any advantage. The optimizations come about if and only if a compiler actually pays attention to tail calls. So this is an important point to note. Here's the idea. For the current function, which is basically at its end, there are quite a few things that we are keeping track of, right? The return value, as well as whatever variables that are local to this particular function. Here's what's cool. You don't have to care about those things anymore because we know this function is over. Instead, we just go straight to the next piece of code and we'll return back to where this particular function needs to return to. You can imagine that if we have a whole set of functions chained together like this, it turns into just the equivalent of looping, of iteration, which is going forwards. There is no notion of you know, going into a function and then backing out. We're just going step by step by step. This, I think, is a pattern that we can see the most clearly when we talk about tail call recursion. Take a look at a quick recursive example. This is a function that calls itself, right? And it works by returning an answer at the end of the day. I hope you are able to recognize the tail call in this context, even though because this is a recursive call, this is technically tail call recursion. But yeah, it's the same idea. In a normal situation where there is no optimization, we'll have to keep track of every call stack as we move along. But if we do optimize for tail calls, here's what we can do. Every time the answer of one recursive operation is evaluated, we can simply pass those numbers along and forget about everything else. We've essentially unrolled the entire operation into just iteration, into just a simple equivalent of a loop. When we finish up the entire recursive trace, we end up with nothing but just a single answer, which does not need to bubble back through the other calls just to get back to the caller. Instead, that answer goes straight back. Not only is this much simpler in terms of the processing that's involved, memory management also becomes much simpler because we don't have to deal with a whole bunch of call stacks in memory that we need to you know, allocate and then deallocate. It's just one thing that's moving forwards, one answer that's coming back. That's the power of tail calls and tail call optimization. The reason why people discuss tail calls and recursion together so often is because, well, recursion generates a whole bunch of function calls. When you do recursion, you tend to get a very complex call stack. This complexity could create problems. You may end up with, you know, exceeding the call stack if you're not careful. You may end up with excessive memory consumption or even slow processing as it, well, takes time to deal with all that complexity. So having tail call optimization makes life really simple for you. And that's why tail call optimization is quite a common optimization that is done by your compiler automatically these days. While you may not be able to exactly see the effects of this in action, it does translate to tangible improvements. Anyway, that's it. That's all there is for this Random Wednesday episode. Until next time, you're watching 0612TV with Nerdfirst.net.